The most coveted prize in Moto America is the Motul Superbike National Championship. And for Yamaha's Cameron Bobier, he's so close, he can taste it. Will the Californian shift into championship mode, or will he throw everything he has at it to win the race and hold up that number one plate? It's time to find out as the Garden State hosts the fastest road racers in the United States right now only on PN Sports. It's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship, round nine of 10 for 2018. Welcome to the Moto America Championship of New Jersey, New Jersey Motorsports Park in Millville, New Jersey. And yeah, it's raining. I'm Greg White sitting alongside Jason Pridmore, who's multi-time national and world champion in the road racing discipline. And uh, Thanks for verifying that, Greg. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> how I do it. And the rain continues to fall, Jason, but, but it, it looks, comes in waves. It does come in waves. Just now, in our Super Sport race, it was as hard of rain as I've seen all day long. And uh, yeah, I'm seeing a couple of the guys, it looks like, I see Kyle Wyman, I see Garrett Gerloff, uh, Cam Peterson, have all gone through this pit lane for a second time just to get another look at the racetrack. Very heady move by these guys, Jake Lewis. It's within our rules. You get five minutes, I believe, to uh, go back out and look at the siding lap, or 10 minutes, and uh, and he's there able to get a couple laps. That's right. That's right. All right, well, a lot going on after that super sport race. Let's get right down to the third member of our broadcast team, Hannah Lopa. I'm still here. It is still raining, um, maybe even a little bit harder than earlier, and I think the temperatures have dropped slightly. It's a little bit cooler out here, too. Mm. Um, you guys probably have a better vantage point up in the booth than I do. Maybe you can shed some light on the situation, on how the standing water is on the track, because it has been raining consistently since the start of our last race. What's it look like out there? Well, I think, Hannah, about... 15, 20 minutes ago, towards the end of the Super Sport race, it was as hard as I'd seen it. And then it kind of got a little light out there, but now we definitely have some big puddles again, kind of on the front straightaway. Um, you know, the Superbike riders will definitely come in. Moto America officials will hopefully talk to them and see what they think of the race, uh, the racetrack surface. So uh, we'll see We'll see how that all ends up. All right, well, it's cool outside, like Hannah said, Jason, but it's time for our hot spots. So let's take a look at the hot spots around New Jersey Motorsports. Park. All right, so when I'm asked to do this, i got to think about the spots that I feel are kind of the places where we're going to see some action. And for sure, down in turn one, we've seen action all weekend. You come off that big front straightaway, and uh, this is some stuff that we did yesterday in the rain. And uh, you can see Matthew Skoltz yesterday just had to let the brake lever off. It's a very committed pass when you get to the end of that straightaway, especially when you get around guys that are as close to you in these conditions to make that pass can be a little bit tough. Then you come up over the top of two and you go into turn three, this little chicane area. The hardest part about this is where these guys are now. They tip into here. Right now we have a little bit of standing water on the inside of that curving. And then uh, the flip back to the left and then the right out of here is very fast up over a little wheelie hill. Next turn I thought I'd look at was turn six. Coming down into turn six, it's a bit of a blind entry towards where you cannot see the apex. Um, the bike will feel very light to you as you tip it in. In these conditions, you can't get as much load on the motorcycle, so you got to be a little bit more careful. It turns eight and nine, you go up this big, long, sweeping right-hand corner, and we saw a lot of incidents in the turn just prior to this, turn seven. Uh, but coming up this hill into turn eight and nine, there's a couple little patches that the riders seem like they, they don't want to get too near. And then this last corner, this last corner is very fast, Greg. Uh, you come up underneath this bridge, uh, again, the conditions being what they are, even though uh, it's wet, it's still the fastest turn on the track, leading onto that straightaway. And you know, we saw a guy yesterday just go dominate by 30 something seconds. This morning, the lap time looked a lot closer. So we'll see how that is. Thank you, Jason, for the hot spots around the track. Now, we talked about yesterday. Well, in the last three races, we have had one rider, Jason, that has won two races, uh, kind of out of the clear blue sky. And the guy's name is Josh Heron. How wow. awesome is this guy and this team clicking this late in the season? Tremendous. I mean, guy shows up at the first race, rode a stock motorcycle, his own, <laughs> and got himself some points. I don't think anybody in the paddock has ever denied that Josh Heron has a ton of talent. But sometimes as you mature and you get along further, uh, and, and if you get around the right group of people and the right uh, team, like he is right now with Attack, uh, you can just start to gel. 
and Richard Stamboli can build a bike as good as anybody I've ever met. Uh, and you put that talent with a great rider. Uh, doesn't surprise me at all that he's won a couple of races, and I wouldn't expect him to. to I, I would expect him to probably win one or two more before the season's out. I know he's another guy that wants to win one of these races in the full dry, and uh, you know we'll, we'll maybe get a chance to see that at Barber. And he's only 20 points behind Tony Elias, so Josh Heron is 30 or third in the championship. Tony Elias second. There's the number one plate. He'll take us to commercial break. We'll be back to New Jersey Motorsports Park. Well, maybe. Motorcycles on the racetrack, the grid, and Hannah is with Tony Elias. Tony, we didn't get a chance to hear from you post-race yesterday. What are your thoughts on how the race went, and, and what are you thinking right now after just that sighting lap? Well, of course, this situation is for everybody, and it's not easy, but, well, it's much different than yesterday. Yesterday was safe. Today, a lot of water patch, uh, much more water. It's much more cold. So it's so delicate. Uh, yesterday I was pushing too much. I mistake, and I lost the championship. So let's try to enjoy a little bit and stay on the bike today. Well, stay safe out there and best of luck to you. Thank you, Tony. Well, technically he didn't lose no, it. I know. I, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Uh, no, okay. I know what you're All saying. Right. Yeah, he knows. Yeah, he knows who he's racing against. Cameron Bobby is obviously a <laughs> pretty smart kid. So. But uh, Tony said, pushed too hard yesterday, but the conditions are a lot different than yesterday. A, a tremendous amount different, actually, because even this morning again, the lap times were quite a bit off of where they were yesterday. So, and it's gonna be a feel out process. 18 laps, uh, the race has got shortened from yesterday. So uh, let's just rip back down to Hannah real quick. Who you got, Hannah? I've got Cam Peterson here. Cam, I think everyone wants to know how your foot is feeling. Obviously, you've been doing really well even in this morning session. What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, to be honest, the foot's actually doing pretty good. Um, you know, the rain definitely helped, made it a bit easier on my foot. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty lucky that the rain decided to come. Um, you know, I don't mind riding in the rain. It's pretty sketchy out there. There's a lot of standing water. Um, it's going to be an interesting race. You know, I think it's going to be a battle of the guys who can just kind of stay up on two wheels. Um, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we're going to put my head down and see what I can do today. Best of luck out there. Thank you, Cameron. All right. For those who don't know, Cam Peterson had an incident at Sonoma where his foot got caught between the, the basically the swing arm and the tire, and it ripped a big hole in his foot that was all over social media. So he had some surgery, and he's coming back from that. So a great top five result for the Genuine Broaster Chicken Honda team yesterday. And he was fast again this morning. You know who was quickest this morning? Who? Garrett Gerloff. Sure was. Garrett was flying this morning. Let's look at our grid, Greg. Matthew Skoltz. Yesterday in a wet Super Bowl, a minute 38.1 to, to lead everybody. Then Roger Hayden, Cameron Bovier, row two, Tony Elias. Our winner from yesterday, Josh Heron, and Cam Peterson, who we just spoke to. They're lining up sixth in row two. Row three, Kyle Wyman, David Anthony, and Jake Lewis. Then we have Garrett Gerloff. Got to come from row four today, so we'll see how quick he can get through people. Danny Azek and Max Flinders are, are rounding out our row four. Row five, we've got Bruno Silva and San Rodrigo. So when we talk about qualifying and things, this track's really hard to pass on. So I'm sure Garrett, as I look out my window right now and see how hard it's coming down, I'm sure Garrett's already made a plan of kind of what he wants to do. It definitely gives a rider a lot of confidence when you come in off of a big long race like they did yesterday. And then he goes out this morning and he was actually fastest. Um, but he's gonna have to come from that row four, uh, row four spot. You can see Cameron Bobier there yeah. doing his helmet up. You know, normally, Jason, in dry conditions, we can look at, at timing sheets and we can see lap times and we can do all of those things. But, uh, yeah, I'm you know what? I, I have I, noticed. I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking in the middle of that second row. I'm a little distracted because there's no Josh Heron. And I don't see a bike out on pit lane from our commentary position. I wonder what's going on. Yeah, I... It's hard to say, you know, it's uh, so for sure, like if he doesn't get this warm up lap going, he's going to have to start from the back of the of the race. So with Josh Heron out the way he's been riding, Garrett Gerloff having the, <laughs> the warm up he's had, I mean, 
Cam Peterson, the way he's riding. Uh, uh, Kyle Wyman had some issues yesterday with the rear end of the motorcycle that they think they have. Jason, Kyle I'm look looked better in warm-up this morning. Kyle. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he did. I mean, I'm looking out over this grid that you're looking at right now, people, and I'm thinking in the drive, Jason and I can analyze data sheet. Yeah. We can look at sheets, lap times, and we can kind of predict, you know, who's going to be up there. But in this race, we're throwing I mean, papers in the air. It, there's no yeah. rhyme or reason. I think Cam Peterson, if he can just ride a very, very mature race with an 18-lap race. I, I, we could see him on the podium. Bobby Fong unfortunately fell over yesterday, so the other Brosters chicken bike isn't on the grid because uh, Bobby unfortunately yep. dumped his head a little bit. Let's go to Hannah with our Cycle Gear Last Minute Report. Today is Matt Skoltz's birthday, so starting from that front spot on the grid, uh, what better way to celebrate another journey around the sun than with a few laps around a racetrack here? So wishing him the happiest of birthdays, and hopefully he and him and his team can celebrate with a podium uh, a little later. Well, that would be is great, he, yeah. What is he, 18? I mean, it looks like he's about 18. Does Matthew? He's a big, tall guy, but uh, and I know that he's going to be focusing on that first lap today because that's kind of where he lost his time. When these guys come back around to the grid, though, and they don't see that number two bike, that attack Yamaha of Josh Heron on the grid, that's going to give a lot of these guys a big boost of confidence. So off to the warm-up lap they go. And like Jason was saying, a couple riders, they have the option. Once pit lane opens, you have five minutes to basically get into your grid spot and you have the option to ride through pit lane. You remember it's what caught Cameron Bobier out That's right. at pit race. That's right. Why he had to start from the back of the grid. Um, and so they actually, riders chose to do that. And they it's easier to do that here because in the dry, the lap times were about uh, 20 or so seconds quicker than they are at pit race. And in the wet, obviously they had enough time to do it. So a couple riders had a good second look at this racetrack as now they get this final look before they go into race mode. So there's Cam Peterson, the lone rider for the Genuine Brewster Chicken Honda team for this one on that CBR 1000 RR SP2 motorcycle. Kyle Wyman trying to get some good, you know, heat in the tires. So Jake hard. Lewis, M4X star Suzuki, he's, he could win this thing. I mean, it's just very hard to get heat, like you were saying, Greg. So it's a great point you're making because you heard Tony say as well that it's definitely a little bit cooler out there. So. Being able to get some heat in your tires is, is going to be a key. But right now, I really believe it's anybody's. Cameron Bobier looked extremely fast this morning as well in, in practice. I think the first three guys were within the same second. And that was Garrett Gerloff and Heron and, and, and Bobier. So, yeah. And Cam Peterson was, was fast as well. Yeah, and I don't see, haven't seen Heron. I haven't even seen a whiff of him at this point from yeah. our commentating position. That is heartbreak for the fans. It's heartbreak for the attack performance Heron compound team. And of course, Josh himself, where I know he would love to be in this mix, coming off of a couple of wins, two wins in the last three races. Water's so evil, too, to a lot of the crews, because if it gets into certain spots oh, on the and, bike, yep. uh, it can just short something out so simple. And it could be the easiest little thing of why that bike's not started and not running. But as we come to the grid, um, yeah, as we're coming to the grid here, I don't even, like you say, Greg, I don't see a sign of, uh, of Josh at all. And you know what's really strange is you can go out in the morning warm-up like they did today, and then you just kind of take the bikes back, and you're doing small things to them, and then the thing just doesn't start. Yeah, it's just, and you especially don't even, with water, like and you those say. those guys are and so this, smart, too. In this day and age, yep. so many electronics on the bike, so many different wires, anything that gets exposed could create a short. I mean, there's so many different issues that could happen. Dave Anthony doesn't have anybody in front of him on that third row, so he can no, he literally. Doesn't. Yeah, does he? If he can get a good start too, and a lot got another guy with a lot of experience, but look, Garrett Gerloff, he is so ready to go already on the fourth. And we're ready to go. Row. Motul Superbike race number two here at the championship of New Jersey. Sands Bobby Fong, Sands Josh Heron, but it's time to get race action underway. A good launch from the 11, but look at Cam Peterson what? around the outside. On the inside, actually, comes Cam Peterson. Oh, Matthew Skultz trying to find some room. Yep, and and Garrett Gerloff is going to come out of turn one. Wow, he got all the way up to fourth or fifth, and then just kind of gets gets dropped back between one and two. But how about Cam Peterson we leading this race? We have a Honda CBR1000RR leading the way. Genuine Broster Chicken Honda's Cam Peterson is getting after it right now. And he's won in the rain here before. Now Cam's just got to try to... Just relax a little bit. He's got the other Cam right behind him. And uh, Cam Bobian now is going to go by him in the short shoot before they get to turn six. And uh, it's going to be easy for me now not to get these two confused because <laughs> I can just say Cameron and we got one and two. Yeah, exactly. So Cameron Bobier, Cam Peterson. 
And then you have Matthew Skull. So two South Africans, they're together. Got oh, easy. He's just spinning, easy spinning, on the spinning. Throttle. They're trying to be there as they come out of turn five. These two, the 45 and the 11 in South Africa, had a crazy championship battle back in South Africa in 2014. Very familiar with each other. There's M4X star Suzuki's Jake Lewis. Jake, earlier today, I had a chance to talk to him, and he was kind of just throwing his hands up the air. And I said, Jake, you have a chance of winning this race <laughs> just like anyone else does in the field. Yeah. Word, word, sorry, Jay, word from Hannah is, Hannah just sent me a text message letting me know that Josh Heron's in the garage. His team's still trying to get that bike started. <sighs> Such a bummer. Heartbreak. Thanks, Hannah. But let's get back up here. We got Cam, Cam Bobie now leading, but Matthew Schultz is trying to figure out a way to get by Cam Peterson. And you can see both riders right now, just that initial touch of the throttle, they're just getting bucked up out of the seat ever so slightly. So just got to keep attention focused forward right now if you can, Peterson. And you know that Matthew Schultz is going to probably hear this Yamaha try to come up alongside of him here. So here comes the Yamalu Westby Racing Yamaha. Nope, on the brakes they go. And talking with Cam Peterson this morning, Jason, you know, he was fourth for a good bit towards the end of the race. And then he got passed by Yoshimura Suzuki rider Roger Hayden. Who's and right there behind him. He's right there behind him. But Cam said, lesson learned. He started to get tight those last two laps and just said, finish, only finish, you gotta finish, you gotta finish. And that lost any concentration he had in front of him. Roger Hayden got by him. So lesson learned for the Superbike rookie. How about Cameron Bobby? You think he's worried about championship? Nope. <laughs> Not at all. Nope. He's just on his way. That time, Cam Peterson gets out of that turn just a little bit better. And even though Matthew had thoughts of trying to go up underneath him before they got to this fast turn four, he's going to go try to do it now. He's got to if he go thinks he's got a chance five. of winning. Yep. Goes by Cam Peterson nice and smooth as they go through turn five. This is where they've got to try to get out of here as easy as they can on the gas. All right, a lot of race action on the racetrack, but we know fan favorite wants to talk about. Oh, and Kyle Wyman crashes in turn number 10. So Kyle Wyman down in turn 10. But let's get to Hannah, who has Josh Heron. Josh, we're in the garage here, obviously not how you anticipated spending this afternoon. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Uh, they just, the bike started. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. I've been trying to fix it for like 30 minutes now, but something's up. Um, definitely not, not how we wanted the day to go, but uh, you know, we got a, got a win yesterday, which was nice. And we'll, you know, we'll go, uh, go to Barbara with our heads held high for sure. It's, Stuff like this happens. We've had a good run past couple weekends and haven't had any bugs with the bike all year. So I think uh, we've done pretty good and, and can't be too bummed out. So uh, yeah. hopefully there's not a red flag, but if for some reason it keeps raining and it puddles up, I think we got a chance to restart. So we'll just uh, try and try and get this thing working and be ready. Thanks, Josh. Now, nah, great attitude. You'd expect nothing else from a guy who's been in the paddock for a long time. He did get his win yesterday. He's showing great form. and. Of course, he's going to feel just as bad for the team as the team feels for him not being able to ride. So, looking here, Tony Elias now up to, well, he's been fifth grade pretty much since the start here. Garrett Gerloff, I, I, Garrett got such a great start, and from his pace this morning, I thought he would go forward. Yep. And uh, he just hasn't been able to maybe find that same exact feel that he had this morning. Mind you, it definitely is a, is a lot wetter. Now Roger Hayden's having a good look at Cam Peterson as they head out of the chicane up into this very fast turn four. And uh, let's see if Raj tries to do anything with Cam as they go into turn five. He is going to try. Yep, he slides kind of up underneath Cam Peterson. So that moves Roger Hayden now up into third. And Raj's bike actually doesn't look too bad under initial throttle. I haven't seen his bike move around so much. And Raj is the kind of, if he starts getting a little bit of confidence, he can still see those two guys up in front of him right now. Cameron Bobier leads the way, 2.6 seconds ahead of Matthew Skultz, ahead of Roger Hayden and Cam Peterson. The battle we're watching right now, Tony Elias drifting back into fifth spot. Garrett Gerloff, Jake Lewis, David Anthony, Danny Eslick in ninth, Max Flinders in tenth. Kyle Wyman, he's back on the racetrack after falling off. Sam Verderico in twelfth. So Wyman's going to try to make a charge up through the field as well. Yeah, you know, when you think about it now, if you're Cam Peterson, you're going to be wanting to look on your pit board. He's going to have a big plus sign behind as we get a good look out the front of Cameron Bobier's bike. But it's, it's going to be important for those Brewster Chicken guys to give him a good solid board where it's going to say plus four or five. He's got Roger Hayden right in front of him. And hopefully that'll help draw him along, get his attention going forward. You can see Matthew Skoltz here. He's, down, he's just on the fastest lap of the race. Minute 45.5, half a second quicker than Bobier. The two guys behind are at a minute 47 and a minute 48 respectively. So Matthew Skoltz now doing exactly what he did yesterday, but he's got himself up into second a lot earlier and he has a good look at Cameron Bovier just up the road from him. Full stocking mode at this point, trying to close the gap. 
Skol Skolci wants another win in Moto America, the Motul Superbike class. Jason, from the onboard shots you saw out of the front of Cam Bobier's bike, with that view, how treacherous did it look to you? Yeah, it's, make, you know, it's no question it's te treacherous. Oh, somebody's down. Matthew's down. Oh, no. Matthew's crashed in turn four, fast right-hander. Um, so, you know, it's just, what you're, how treacherous is it, Greg? There you go. It's yeah. that treacherous. It's, you know, unfortunately, this is going to be in a fast oh, corner. The, the right looks... side, everything's broken off on the right. And, uh, yeah, that, that bike's not going to go anywhere. Looks like it just went through a swamp, too. Yeah, unfortunately, you can see that the handlebar off the motorcycle. And so, unfortunately for Matthew Skultz, who is in a great position for a solid podium, possibly challenging for the race win. Here you go, Greg. It's just going to be a really fast Fast crash. one. When you tip into those fast corners, it's it's so so important that you're delicate on it. And you know, even in these conditions, these guys know. I mean, I'm sitting up here saying that they're they're being as delicate as they possibly can, and stuff can still happen. No, oh, yeah. I, I mean, mean, so easily in this stuff. And now Bobier is going to come through, and he should probably have plus five or six on his board as he comes across the line. Of course, the race shortened from 23 to 18 because of these conditions as now Roger Hayden, oh by the way, with the exit of Matthew Skultz, that moves Cam Peterson yep. back onto a podium position. And, and he ain't letting Roger get away. And this is kind of what I was hoping for Cam, is that he just, he's gonna have a nice thing on his board that says plus whatever he is, what is it, Greg? How far, what's he got to seven, seven. seconds? Mm -hmm. So he's got seven seconds and he's got Cam Bobby up the road, but he can kind of judge his pace off of Raj a little bit, which is what it looks like Cameron's doing. And, and now it's just important for him to just put his laps in. Put it, get his marks right and, and hit all his marks, connect the dots and all that stuff, and and that's what he's got to try to do. He looks so much better through this little section than he did earlier. And Cam Peterson told me this morning, Jason, that it was so mentally exhausting yesterday, the yeah. focus, 38 plus minutes of race action with the focus in the rain. He was asleep by 8.30, out, <laughs> yeah. he said, out cold. <laughs> that doesn't you know, surprise me. In full recovery mode, plus I think, you know, I mean, yeah, his foot is not 100% either. Yep. And as Hannah told us in the report yesterday, the amount of different shifts that he have to do, and it was his shifting foot that's, that's you know, uh, affected by it. But, of course, with, without the extra pressure of the extreme lean angles and going from side to side, you're not physically using as much energy, but mentally this thing is at, so least, at least as twice as difficult you, as a dry you race. You literally cannot let your guard down at all. And it's great to see Raj putting in a good ride right now as well yep. uh, in second spot. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's mentally this kind of racing is is really truly exhausting. All right, if you have been you know out of um, I don't know internet Wi-Fi range or haven't had any connection, and you haven't heard Roger Hayden retiring after this season, so leaving that uh, Yoshimura Suzuki spot open, it's been a big topic of conversation. As for this rider right here, Tony Elias, he's starting to come under fire from Garrett Gerloff and Jake Lewis back there. So Elias looking forward at Cam Peterson, but he's 7.2 seconds behind. And Elias might drop back another couple spots unless he starts to pick up the pace. We'll know here a better indication as we come across the line. So there goes Tony. He comes across a 148.5 and a 147.7 for Gerloff. So the 31 machine, Gerloff, just took another one point, uh, just about one second out of the lead of Tony Elias, and now you can see that the Monster Energy Yamaloop Yamaha Factory Racing Superbike rookie Garrett Gerloff on a charge to go catch Tony Elias. And good to see Jake Lewis kind of stuck in there as well. I know uh, he's been struggling a little bit in the wet, it seems, and that's just a setup thing. Sometimes you just struggle on weekends like this where you just you just wish you had another hour to get try something else. But Jake has now got himself in this battle for fifth or fourth, sorry. This battle for Ford. Look, Garrett, he's going to have a look up underneath Tony. Not quite close enough there, but that's that's kind of like a little test run for the next lap, I think. No doubt about it. Cameron Bobier, nine the, seconds look at ahead. The drive. What a drive by Garrett Gerloff as he goes past and Whoa. Tony looks back and sees two guys behind him. And uh, now he knows he's got Jake Lewis there as well. Not the disaster in the rain we saw back in 2016 in April for Tony Elias, race number one here when it was absolutely raining. It was race one, right? Yes. When it was raining and both, he got lapped. It, it rained in both, Greg. It was horrendous yeah. that weekend, yeah. Didn't, and Yosh, after that, they went to, uh, went to um, Dunlop's Dunlop facility yep. in Alabama and had a wet test, and that solved a lot of their problems. But, you know, again, it comes to risk-reward and how good you feel, how good, confident you are. And right now, Cameron Bobier is ridiculously confident. Confident as he just hit the fast slap of the race of 144-133.
Yep, and we're just, uh, you can look at this view from, look at this view from the back of uh, Tony's bike. You can see how much water there is and things. And see, Tony, what he'll do now is he'll watch what Garrett's doing. He's kind of got somebody to ride with, somebody he can keep kind of in front of him and, uh, and look at. Conditions seem to be getting better only from lap time. So Cameron Bobier set the fastest lap of the race, but then Roger Hayden did his personal best at a 144.2. Cam Peterson, a 146.1, his personal best, and a 147.3 for Garrett Gerloff, his personal. Oh, oh my gosh. That's see, what that, it was. That's okay. What it was. We didn't, I didn't, I we didn't, didn't see, see that, that either. You know? Yeah, so sorry. That is, that is a crazy, crazy. Garrett actually had the thing pulling really hard out of that turn five and uh, just got away from him ever so slightly there. But uh, you can see he's gone up the road a little bit now. From yeah, he's Tony. forgotten all about that, right? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, right. So Tony Elias trying to hang on to fifth spot with Jake Lewis coming up after him. So Yoshimura Suzuki factory rider, two GSXR 1000s in slightly different configurations. You can see the, the big beefy swing arm of the factory bike versus the M4 X-Star Suzuki machine. But Jake Lewis still on a very competitive motorcycle. And, uh, you know, so far this season for Jake Lewis, he has had a podium finish, a third place finish. So no stranger to Motul Superbike class podiums for Jake Lewis. No, it's exactly the question right. is, Jake, where does Jake do it? You know, well, what I mean? if, if he can get close thing. enough to Tony, yeah. And then he's just got to get himself. It, it, it's just such a big committed pass, you know. And, and I think it, we're, all, we're all racers, like I've said all day, but a little bit of the raciness gets taken out away, away from you only because of the conditions themselves. So uh, Garrett looks great. Garrett, Garrett this morning went down. He went to a minute 47 this morning is what he was doing. So the pace at the front's a little bit quicker. You can see Raj and... Uh, Cameron both did their personal bests that last time by. All these guys right now are on their personal bests. Cameron, Tony, and Jake are all on personal best lap times. And you see what's happened here. Garrett's led the way and it's kind of pulled Tony along with him and they've got away from Jake ever so slightly. So 46-1, 45-7 that time for, for Tony. Put that in perspective, it's really close. They're pretty much the same times as what Raj and Cameron are running in second and third right now. Rain continuously pouring down here, and some of those lap times we're seeing are just riders as now they're, you know, seven into this race, finding those lines that's going to give them that optimal traction. There's Cameron Bovier, 10.5 seconds adrift of the rest of this field, and trying to separate himself in terms of wins from Tony Elias. This would be his eighth on the season and a national championship at stake as well. Yep. Yeah, he's the, he's got, when you get such a big points lead, you don't really even think about that so much anymore. Here's the race start, Greg. Look at Garrett Gerloff in the fourth row. He got a rocket start and got up there. Uh, the front row all got off pretty well. Cam Peterson from that inside second row got off tremendously well. And uh, looks like Kyle Wyman got a good start. But you can see the 31 there of Garrett Gerloff at one point. I thought he was going to just actually get up to maybe fourth going into one. And you know, just drop back to six. You the, can see. The thing with Gerloff is I was sp speaking with his crew, uh, you know, today. And oh, Matthew, Ma yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Remember, wow. to start, Matthew, he had he had something go on, and he was just like, "I got to get some real estate here." Yeah, the you know, snapped around. He had both feet off the pegs as well. Yeah, but for Garrett Gerloff, remember, Jason Garrett had an off uh, crash in the rain earlier on this year. I think it was Road Atlanta, and his crew was saying that Garrett is still trying to build confidence because we don't ra race in the rain a lot. Yeah, and yesterday was kind of a function of that, and then having a good session this morning. I think we're seeing, you know, Garrett Gerloff at the moment in a solid fourth place position. He can just kind of keep chipping away at it for sure. So, and you can see San Rodrigo moving over. This battle for fourth just rolling on through. All again, 46 flat that time for Garrett. So he's actually just a little bit quicker than Cameron Peterson, but he's 11 seconds back. And when he comes up over this rise, he'll be able to see those other guys disappearing out of the chicane. And you can, the neat thing about Jersey is there's a couple spots as a rider you can see if you're gaining or losing time without having to look back because the track's kind of in front of you and, and kind of wraps around itself a bit. So Garrett's going to be able to see that he's got 10 laps to go. Uh, he'll be able to judge if he's catching uh, Cam Peterson up ahead of him or not. He's going to be pushed, though, because Tony's now done what Tony always seems to do. He just kind of latches on the back of somebody. if they. Uh, he's not afraid to let people go by and kind of pull him, pull him along, is he? No, he's not. Under acceleration, just getting out of that corner, you can see that Garrett started to spin and kind of had to let off a little bit and then yep. got back on the gas. Some of that can be electronics. You know, that's where it gets really dicey. We don't race a lot in the rain, so from an electronic standpoint, traction control specifically, how do you as a crew get to the point where you have the perfect map in that motorcycle for your rider? So the rider's still having to do a lot of control with the throttle. 
Nice tight line from Tony again. Yeah, yesterday we saw Tony kind of wanting to miss that patch at the top. I've seen a few riders run it over. Doesn't seem to be horrible, but if you haven't ran it over, um, e even in the dry or practice running over, you definitely don't want to just try to do it in the race. So it becomes more of a visual thing uh, where your confidence is telling you where the grip is actually at. And uh, sometimes you can run over that stuff and it's fine. Wow, 43-6 from our race leader. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thanks for pointing that out. 43-6 for Cameron Bobier. So 45-1 for Cam Peterson. So the third place rider set his fastest lap of the race, as did Garrett Gerloff on the 31, a 45-6. So Cam Peterson had lost two tenths of a second to the last lap to Garrett Gerloff, and now just got back another half a second. Yeah, that's a good, good little reaction. And you know, the thing is, is I know those guys are, are getting their pit boards and they're looking and seeing what the boards are actually saying. And uh, I'm pretty sure Danny Walker right now is probably sitting on his hands and doing whatever. <laughs> He's probably freaking out a little bit down there. I'm sure. Maybe not watching the TV. Who Maybe knows? not watching or listening. Oh, to his Roger, getting, it, getting spinning a little. It up. That's yeah. the first time I've seen Roger's bike do that. So Roger's pretty comfortably in the 45s as well. 45.5 his last lap by. In talking to a lot of the crews yesterday in the Motul Superbike class, in terms of, I was curious about the rear tire wear, and everyone said that the rear tire looked actually excellent. Pretty you know, good. these are yeah. these are in a, in a sense perfect conditions for a full rain tire. Yep. In terms of temperature uh, today, it's a little bit cooler than it was yesterday, but it, the front, everyone said the fronts look absolutely perfect, and the rear had just normal wear on them. So, you know, that was probably more of a function of a throttle application than anything else. Genuine Broaster Chicken Honda's Cam Peterson. In a moment of the season when we really need this rider to get a good result for his team, flying the flag for American Honda here out of Torrance, California, showing that the CBR1000RR is a competitive superbike platform. He's doing the business right now, is the South African, and he is no stranger to winning races here. He won on a 600 machine a few years ago in the wet at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Yep, and he's just uh, he's continuing in the 45s, 45-2, so he's only a tenth off his fastest lap. So he just needs to just keep plugging along, doing what he's doing, doing a good, good job right now. Here you go, back to our guy at the front. Cameron that time had to get through a little bit of traffic, so he went 44-9, so about 1.3 off his best time. One of the good indicators on how just how much rain is coming down is when you see the bike on the racetrack go through and make its own like trail. You can see where the, where the tires go through and it makes a little bit of a snake. How quickly that snake disappears. Yep. How quickly that dry for a moment. Not dry, but you know, just you can see the asphalt. Yep. And I'm telling you, Jason, there was a shot a moment ago where I looked at Cam and he was leaving that line and it disappeared probably, you know, just 100 feet behind it. Yeah, really quickly. Yeah. No, we saw that earlier too, going down that front straightaway. It was pretty bad uh, in our super sport stuff. And, and, uh, but, but it definitely, looking out our window right now, the rain's not as hard. It's not pounding down the way it was, but good shot out the front. You can see the puddles out there on the track. And these two guys are still battling for that fourth spot right now. Live championship results. If it ended right now, this is the way it would end up. And of course, Cambobier would snatch back that number one plate right out of the hands of Tony Elias and be the 2018 Motul Superbike Class champion. But we have eight laps to go to decide this one. And anything can happen in these conditions. And Tony just latched right onto yeah, the back of Gerloff. He, he yep. just never gives up. No, that's kind of what makes watching Tony uh, so fun to watch because it doesn't matter if he's battling for first or battling for fourth. He still has that same intensity. But I think it's a great, it's a good ride for Garrett. You know, he had to come from fourth row and uh, he's kind of come through. His lap times have continued to improve every lap and uh, now they're down in the 45s pretty consistently. Liking what I'm seeing, by the way, left part of your screen. Kyle Wyman picked up the motorcycle. He's all the way up to eighth spot is Wyman. So Kyle doing a good job after his off-track incident earlier in the race. Danny Essek in ninth, Max Flinders in 10th, and Sam Verderico in 11th spot. Both Raj and Cameron Peterson that time by in the 44s, as well as Cameron Bobia, all in the 44s now, the, the first three. So the gap has just gotten bigger between third and fourth. This is really our biggest battle on the track right now between these two guys. What about Tony not being connected to the bike on the outside foot peg? I mean, we see it all the time. He's a pretty, pretty small guy. He's not like a, he's not a really big, obviously a big individual. So um, we see that a lot with him. Obviously it doesn't affect the way he rides no, at all. Not at all. At all. so used to it. He's been doing it for a few years now, so yeah.
great. Just listen. I was, I was, I was trying to listen to it, you know, yep. just to see, like, listen to some of that traction control and how it's working on the Oshimura Suzuki. Taking a look at that onboard camera shots. Fantastic. Normally, I think in dry conditions, you would see just an eyeful of another motorcycle all the time, but in these spectacular conditions, Tony Elias in fifth spot. Here's our leader, Cameron Bobier. Bobier on the Monster Energy Yamalube Yamaha factory machine. Not only is he racing for another race win today, but also for that national championship. And man, if he's able to wrap it up today, it's one you're never going to forget. Yeah, no. you remember that time that it was pouring at New Jersey yep. and I was able to stand on the podium with that number one plate? And his whole crew, the entire Yamaha Corporation in Cypress, California, and in Marietta, Georgia, looking for Cameron Bobier to wrap up this Motul Superbike Class Championship. Today, into lap traffic goes Garrett Gerloff. Yep, they got a couple guys in front of him. I think it's Max Flinders yep. and uh, Danny Essek. Look, both those guys kind of just got out of the way. They got their own little battle going, but uh, just kind of moved out of the way for the, for the battle for fourth here. Danny Eslick fan, still Danny recovering from uh, rib injuries he sustained yep. just, a, you know, really a handful of days ago. So Danny Eslick uh, at pit race still on the motorcycle and getting some points for the Shivey Racing Machine. So the situation right now is as we look at Tony Elias in fifth spot off the back as Cambobia has 15 seconds over Roger Hayden, who has another three seconds over Cam Peterson. Peterson in third spot, yeah, has uh, just, just move 13 move over, over this guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just so, it, the, the grip level just isn't good. That's, it's tricky. It's, it's just, it's, tricky. it's not good. Yeah, it's it's frustrating because as, you know, as riders, we want to be able to still enjoy racing in this stuff and go to, you know, some tracks that we go to, we can, you can pretty much ride it like it's dry still. It's nice. Coda. Um, Coda, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you Tony go. up the inside. There you go. So Tony makes a big move on Garrett Gerloff. So the national champion trying to put a stamp on it. Moves around from fifth into fourth. He made that look easy too, didn't he? Yeah, and I mean, it just felt so high yeah. risk. He had such lean angle yeah. in the wet. And he did it, kind of did it in the turn that he tipped off in. Yesterday, turn seven is where he started that. He was able to just kind of, look at he got the bike on his knee really early in turn seven and, uh, and drove up that hill. So now we'll see if Garrett can respond. So five to go in this one for Cam Bobier and the rest of the field. If you're joining us, no Josh Heron. Oh, oh man, no. Kyle just tipped off. That looks like down in the turn 10 area. Isn't that where we saw he uh, in the beginning that he tipped off in turn 10, I think, as well? He's got to get so. that bike lifted up. It's so frustrating because you go to lift it and the bike moves on the, but grass. on the grass. Yeah. Looks rideable from our perspective. Can't see the foot peg at the moment. At least the bars are intact. Yep. So, yeah, this is going to be just going through this little tight right hander. And then he goes down. There's a big puddle here. And it, God, just actually, I mean, he didn't wow. even do anything wrong. <laughs> Nothing. I mean, no, he just tipped off in there, and, and the front just tucks. And you'll see it here. You see his bars already starting to move. He's not on the brakes. He's not doing anything. He's not doing anything. That is a weird. Cra but that's yep. rain crash. That's what happens it, in this a, stuff. Yeah. You, on that one, you say, oh, just one degree too much lean angle. Yep. Maybe, you know, but how are you supposed to judge that? So, unfortunately for Kyle, his second of the race, we didn't get to see the first one, so that's what we were told, and he'd worked his way all the way up in A spot. So there's a good look at the Camber KWR crew. Of course, Kyle's wife works for us. Yep. Hannah. Hannah's down there. So she's gonna she's gonna have to weather. deal she's gonna have to deal with an angry racer <laughs> after this one's all over, because we know Kyle, especially when he comes to New Jersey, he's he has pace in the dry to put it on the podium and possibly even win races. So it's going to be a very disappointing weekend for Kyle Wyman. But it looks like he picked the bike up, Jay, and yep. is still in eighth spot. Just looking to see. Yep, he did. He did. He got, he's already through our first split. Unless, uh, unless something's just not right there. We'll have to have a look see mm -hmm. that second split pops up. What I was saying earlier, for if you just joined us, Josh Heron did not start this race. They couldn't get the motorcycle started. Bruno Silva, not, he wasn't able to start the race. And Matthew Skultz. He crashed out. Here's a good look at the Dunlop tires. The choice that Cameron Bobier and his team had. Soft front, soft rear on those full reins. Deeply grooved rain tires. Different from the tires we use in normal race competition in the dry, which are full slicks for maximum contact. And what do you see? see? You can see even there. That's, that's where Kyle tipped off just now. And you can see even the bars in Cameron's hands just kind of tucking a little bit there as well. So, um, you know, and, and again, it, 
it's weight transfers and things like that that go on from that little right to the left. But man, Cameron didn't do anything. Kyle really didn't do anything. But you can definitely see some movement in the bars there. I don't really want to talk about this, but I think I have to. Yep. So Roger Hayden right now. There's Cam Peterson in the back. I was nervous there for a moment. Roger Hayden. If Roger can pull this off, this is going to be his best finish of the year. Yep. He's only had three podium appearances, and each one of those are third place finishes. Yeah. So for Roger Hayden, he hasn't been on the podium since Utah, you know, like as actually um, Laguna race number two. So it's been since the, our 11th race of the year that Roger Hayden has even been on the podium. So he is due for this one. And it might be a good little kickstart before Barber. I know there's going to be a lot of build up there and a lot of motion and things from that whole, the whole family and everybody probably going to show up at Barber and puts it on the podium here. A little extra motivation to get down to Barber in a couple weeks and maybe try to do one better. I know it's a track that he does really well, well at. It's a place that he loves. It's a place that he told me he had circled on his calendar when I got a chance to have my little interview with him up at Sonoma. So yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see how he thinks about that. And as the time gets closer, I think Barbara will be a great place for him. Looks like Tony Elias on the gas. In terms of Camp Peterson, he only took, uh, he lost a tenth of a second. Here's M4X star Suzuki's Jake Lewis. I think Jake's having a much better run. Looks a little bit more comfortable than he did yesterday, but he's still 6.7 seconds back. Got Dave Anthony behind him. Yeah, Dave Anthony. Fly racing entry. And then here is the Danny Eslick. Uh, looks like Danny. Max Flinders is with him. They've yeah. Been, they were kind of tied together yesterday as well. And same thing in the in the rain right now. Both Danny and Max is tied up to, it, it, with each other again. So they both just ran their fastest laps of the race as well. Great. About two and a half laps to go in the Motul Superbike race number two. And it looks like Cam Peterson might have had a problem. Jason, oh, he's on our scoring screens here on the on the TV. Oh, oh no, can is it, it be? Is he's it turn, he, is it, He's got through the first segment, so I, I'm trying to figure out where. It's got to be sector number two. It's got to be sector two, but. Oh no, that would be heartbreak for the genuine birth of Chicken Honda team, as they had a podium. Uh, you know, I say wrapped up. It's not wrapped up in these conditions. It's, it's not, you know, it's but not anything can happen. But for Peterson, he's drifted back to seventh spot, which moves Tony Elias up to a podium position. I'm just looking to see. This is the area. I don't see anything in our camera background. I don't see anything there. But it's definitely in sector two. Whatever the problem is, is in sector two. And now, uh, yeah, Tony and Garrett are now battling for that, that final podium spot, third and fourth spot. That's going to promote Jake Lewis up to fifth. Dave Anthony uh, is going to bump up to sixth. I thought that was Dave going through, but it was actually a there's, there's Cam. There's Cam, and he's just, oh, yeah, you can see he's tipped off, Greg, because the left handlebar has uh, has broken off. So, Yep, and he is just bummed. He knows he made a mistake that yeah, he shouldn't have made. But the thing is, is that you say that, we don't, it, it, you can see how quick and how easy it happens. You hate to say he made a mistake. It, I don't think Kyle Wyman made a mistake just now, really, yeah, just by judging. It, it just can just go away from me so quickly, and that's where the mental focus and concentration is so key. You've just got to be able to gauge your speed once you find the speed that you're comfortable at, if you alter that at all. And it can sometimes be, even if you go too slow, it can just throw your rhythm off a little bit in this stuff. And it's just so easy. But now Garrett Gerloff has got a podium sitting right in front of him. We've already seen him ahead of... Tony at one point, so we'll start watching our splits. And we got white flag out right now, Greg, as well. So the final lap of this race, as Cameron Bobier comes across the line. So Bobier a 147.6, and we haven't even seen the likes of Roger Hayden yet, as Bobier tips her into turn number one. So Roger Hayden just came across. So it's 13.2 in hand for Cam Bobier. Very treacherous final lap of this race. But this is exactly yeah. the way that they want to put that number one shirt on him. Is him standing on top of the podium with a race win in hand as well. Yeah, it's the best way to do it. If you're gonna if you're gonna win a championship, to, to win the race and win it the same day is the best way to go, Greg. Perfect. Yep, it would be perfect. So Cameron Bobier 
What what a run he has had since Dunlop changed that new big yeah, tire. Road America, well, I'll go back to Road America. And I've had fans come up to me during the year and say, that was the best races we've seen in a long time. And, you know, there was some epic battles between him and Tony and Josh Heron there. Uh, there was contact made, a little, little, I guess, controversy within the, within the pits and things like that. But Cameron didn't get flustered by any of it. And him and, you know, I talked with him the other day, he told me, how much respect he has for Tony, and how much he looked up to Tony when Tony was racing overseas and things. So, um, yeah, super great guys, Cameron. And, and, and Cameron was overseas, you know. Yep, Red Bull was. Rookies Cup. He was, you know, on a, uh, you know, on a Marquez teammates with Marquez on the small oh. bikes. Uh, I don't know. Here we go. There? Yeah, can you just can. make it through there, Cameron yep. Bobier? You have a national championship waiting for you, Cam. So the California native. One more corner to go here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. Can he make it? He comes out on the front straightaway, straight up and down. And Cameron Bobier will take victory and the 2018 Motul Superbike National Championship. Do it in style. That's how you got to do it. That's about as much emotion as you'll see from Cameron Bobier. <laughs> He's really stoked for that. So good on the whole team. How about Roger Hayden coming home in second? There's going to be a lot of people happy with that. Best finish of the year Best for the Ocean Suzuki Rider. Best Frenchie and all the boys down there have been working really hard for Raj. And uh, I know they like working for Raj. So it's good to see him get that second. And our defending champ from last year. He's going to stand on the podium right next to Cameron and Raj. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's going to be okay with third today. Garrett yeah, he's going to he's gonna enjoy it. He's yep. going to enjoy being on the podium with yep. Cameron Bobier. Of course, Tony doesn't like to do, lose the number one plate, but he'll do it in gracious style. And coming home in fifth spot, Jake Lewis on the M4X Star Suzuki. David Anthony on the fly racing machine is able to come home in sixth spot. Is Kyle Wyman really going to crash twice and finish seventh? I think so. <laughs> I think so. We're looking at Cameron Bobier enjoying his moment. And there is his championship rival congratulating him on the race win and the number one plate. We're looking at our commentary position and watching for Kyle Wyman. We know Max or Sam Bertorico on the 17 just came through, as well as Danny Eslick and Max Flinders. So all of our competitors that are on the racetrack, with the exception of Kyle Wyman, have taken the checkered flag. Cameron Bobier started off the season, Jason, with a ninth place finish at Road Atlanta. We thought, hmm. By the way, coming across the line, Kyle Wyman will take seventh spot in this race. But for Cameron Bobier, it has been an outstanding 2018 campaign, filled with ups and downs, but more podiums than not. Jason, Cameron Bobier will finish off the year, well, Today, anyways, two yep. races to go. Eight wins, six second place finishes, and two third place to date. Solid season for this guy, and not going to be a nicer guy in the paddock either, Greg. He's pretty fierce on the track, and, and uh, I think that we'll all look back at Road America. We'll look back at the two the two race wins that he had there. It's kind of setting the tone, and he went on a run. And when he goes on a run, he's very difficult to beat. So congratulations, Cameron Bobier. Cameron Bobier waited all the way to Road America. And that was back in uh, June to get his first win. Then he went on a four-race win streak. Tony Elias knocked him out down to second place. Went on another three-race win streak. And then, uncharacteristically, at Pittsburgh, he finished fifth. Yeah. That was a whole ruckus, too, that wasn't was a, it, at that first race that, at that Pittsburgh? first race on slicks with some wet mm -hmm. conditions. And then it was uh, second place finish, and then third place yesterday, and now victory for Cameron Bobier. Love that Roger Hayden has his best finish of the year in these conditions. With only two more Motul Superbike races left in his career, you've got to come out and check out Barber Motorsports Park, Moto America, and wish Roger Hayden good luck in his career after motorcycle road racing. What a career Roger Hayden has had, ups and downs in his career, how it started, you know, going off to World Superbike on a uh, underrated motorcycle, but overperforming on that bike, working his way back into this paddock. Number 95, Roger Hayden, Yoshimura Suzuki will stand second on the podium today. And this race just finished, Greg, and it's as bad as I've seen it outside right now. <laughs> Absolutely pouring, and you got a first view of uh, Cameron coming into his crew wow. right there. And uh, you got a good camera view there going to give him, give him the shirt. And yeah. You see J.D. Beach down there with him as well. The wind is blowing. They can barely get the oh shirt my on. Gosh, it is so bad And out this there is the why Moto America decided to move the schedule up because there was a big sell coming, and this might be the start of that. 
So outstanding work by Moto America to get our main race is underway, Liquid Molly Junior Cup, Super Sport and Motul Superbike Class today as we started a little early and they shortened the races as well because they knew the conditions were going to be like this. We'll take a commercial break on B in Sports as Garrett Gerloff congratulates his teammate on the win of the national championship. Tony Elias already where he needs to be. Victory Lane will be there after this. Welcome back to what is the conclusion of round nine, the Motul Superbike class, as we congratulate the number one plate, Cameron Bobier, on victory today, as well as that national championship. And you can see Tony Elias with a big hug. We've seen those two, um, you know, kind of not be best friends at times, but mad respect. A lot of respect between those two hey, guys. Cam's for sure. smiling. Yep. He's Cam is smiling. I saw that. <laughs> we got it, right? Yeah, we, we got, got it. We got it. We got it. That on <laughs> tape. All right, let's go down to Hannah, who has Tony. Third place for Tony Elias today. Are we happy th with this result based on how your weekend has gone? Well, in these conditions, uh, I'm really happy. Uh, I wanted made a little bit better, but it was so tough, so difficult, so easy to, to fall. I stayed on the bike. Uh, yesterday, I lose all the opportunities falling, so it's a good result for us today. And now, uh, try to save the, the second position in the next round and thinking for uh, 19 start to working i can't wait to to start this new job congratulations thank you tony it's a great result and like he said felt like yesterday he lost some opportunity and he did he just tipped over but tony will be back fighting uh, i know that he's not totally signed for next not year not totally correct? signed but, yeah, but that's probably he wants a good to be chance here. we're going to see him again he I know wants him back he yeah. loves it here and you know he's out in california surfing every day so i know he's loving it being <laughs> over here in america and, uh, you know, just, just today, these are just hard conditions, and I think it's a survival thing. And uh, let's get on back down to Hannah. Second place finisher today. Roger, your best finish of the season. How much does it mean to you to be kind of going out with a bang here into retirement? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I really wanted to get a podium for my guys, and, uh, you know, the races are winding down. And, uh, you know, I just kind of put it all out there, and I had a big gap, and I just said, Put my head down and just kept charging the whole time so uh my yoshimura suzuki team gave me a great bike we made a lot of changes from yesterday i wasn't that happy with my bike yesterday and uh today it was so much better and you know i was pretty comfortable so uh hats off to the yoshimura suzuki team and everybody who supports me during these last couple races it's been uh it's been awesome and got two more to go and looking forward to it thanks roger congratulations I think he's going to come out full guns blazing at Barber. Do you think? Know? Yeah, and I think especially he, ri he rips at Barber. He rips at Barber. He's, he always does really well there. I think he lost the pinky at Barber. He too, lost the pinky at so Barber. He's got, he's got, he's got some left DNA his mark there. there. Yeah. yeah, but uh, but he rode great today. I mean, he definitely had had some more pace uh, in the wet. The guys got him comfortable on the bike, but I just have a feeling that at Barber, especially if it stays nice and dry, um, that Rod is going to be right there in the mix of it. Well. The number one plate you can see is on the new national champion's bike. Eight wins on the season. Cameron Bobier is with Hannah. A win on the day, and you secured the championship. You just said a moment ago you feel relieved. What else are you feeling right now? A lot of things. I'm just, uh, I'm over the moon. I mean, I wish, uh, I wish my family, my my brother, and my mom and dad were here, here celebrating with me. But uh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to go back home and uh, get with my friends and family and celebrate this one. Uh, I just got to give a hats off to my my uh, Monster Energy Yamaha team. Um, they gave me an amazing bike all year. It just feels so good just to uh, you know come back after an injury last year. Um, you know we got beat up pretty good at the beginning of the year by Tony, and uh, we just we just never quit fighting. We just kept kept digging, kept digging, and uh, went on a good race race win streak. And uh, luck kind of fell our way, and and here we are wrapping up this championship. I just. Man, I, I just don't even know what to say. I'm just, I'm so thankful uh, for this opportunity, you know, that uh, that Keith's given me, 
and uh, just hats off to uh, you know to Bryce, Lee, Rick, Paul, all those guys, Tom. Um, they got my back and I got theirs. So uh, yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. Thank you. Looking ahead to the future, can you can you give us any insight on what your plans or your goals are for next season? Man, I, I just uh, I want to go back. I want to come back out for that number one plate again. Uh, it's not going to be easy. I know everyone's going to be go back this off season and uh, and put in some hard work. And, uh, and yeah, I just yeah, I'm over the moon. Yeah. Congratulations, Cameron. Thank you. Good job by Cameron. What he was talking about, Jason, is. Tony Lee has started off the year with five wins and six races, and everybody thought, oh, he's going to run away with it again. And I, I kind of actually got to say that I was the same. You and I would sit there and talk about it, and and he was making there were there were easy wins too that didn't look like they were yeah. hard, and, and a few of them. But uh, but this kid, he's just he's so good, and he's technically so sound on a motorcycle that you knew it was a matter of time. And it just took a couple little bad luck things for Tony and that kind of stuff to yeah. just get Cameron set on a on a on a trail. And then he started putting those wins together. He did, and the other thing too is, I think his aggressiveness this season really started to show. We'll take a commercial break, but more from New Jersey Motorsports Park as we wrap up the day right here on BN Sports. Moto America is presented by Dunlop. Dunlop motorcycle tires are the official tire of Moto America. And powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. Two races still remain in this championship as we head off to Barber Motorsports Park. You can see the number one plate though all wrapped up on the Yamaha R1 of Cameron Bobier, but We've got to confirm it with you so you can see it for yourselves. 370 points. Tony Elias right now 81 points behind Cameron. Obviously no chance to win as we only have 50 points remaining. Unfortunately for Josh Heron, they couldn't get that bike started. No points scored today. So our first three guys are set now, I think, for the season, Greg. There's 26 points, it looks like, between Tony. Actually, more than that, 36, isn't it? Between yeah. Tony and Josh. So Matthew Skull's fourth. Uh, Garrett Gerlach can still jump up and get that spot. Jake Lewis back there in sixth. Roger Hayden. Uh, Kyle Wyman and Danny Essek round out the top nine. Strange weekend for a few of the guys. Obviously, Matthew today tipping off was a, was a bit of a shame. Yep. Heartbreak for Cam Peterson. Yep. Oh, the man. Genuine Cam Peterson, chicken yeah. Honda. Just such a drag. I hope he's able to bounce back from that one because that is as close as they've been to a podium finish. Just two and a half laps to go. But we have more coming at you on the other side of this commercial break on this wet and soggy podium here at NJMP. Moment of the race, Jason Pridmore. Well, I, uh, yeah. Right off the start, and if you watch Matthew come across from the left-hand side, but uh, as they went down into turn one, uh, he just got really squirrely down there. But the Cameron Peterson Cameron. was leading the race early. Cameron Bobier, uh, four corners in, goes past him up over the little wheelie hill and was never headed after that. He just started turning the fast lap time after lap time. The only guy that I felt could have even maybe gone with him was the number 11 of Matthew Skultz. Unfortunately, he fell over in turn four, that fast right-hander. The bike was too damaged to, to get up and, and continue. So this guy just rolled along. Not only did he win the race, Greg, but he won our 2018 Moto America Superbike Championship and it's very well earned. 